Well, hello, friends, and welcome to Boston.com's Cocktail Club. I'm Jackson Cannon, and soon I'll be joined by Melly Wiersma, a bartender at The Quiet View in East Boston, Mass. Tonight, we're making cocktails with Mezcal, catching up on the local bar and restaurant scene, and of course, sharing some tips that pros use to make great drinks at home. When you registered, if you click through Gordon's to, to Gordon's Wine and Spirits and purchase the Mezcal Cocktail Kit, then you have all the ingredients you need. Profits from these kits go to Off Their Plate. And this is a great charity that buys meals from restaurants that need the business and distributes them to frontline workers and others in need. First, I'm gonna go through everything we need all the while we are taking your questions from the chat. Uh, ingredients tonight, you'll need some Mezcal. In the kits is this beautiful bottle of Vita. This is 100% Espadine Mezcal um, brought, to get, brought to us by Del McGay. Uh, to make the Paloma, you'll need some grapefruit soda lime juice, and I like a little agave nectar in that drink. Also, uh, a little pinch of salt goes a long way. And to make the Tommy's Margarita some similar ingredients, we're gonna use agave nectar with lime juice, and this time we're gonna spice it up with a little tiny bit of Tabasco or your favorite hot sauce. Regular cubed ice will get us through our shaking and plating of these drinks. And for glassware, just like uh, something nice and tall is really appropriate for the Paloma, uh, highball glass of some sort or juice glass. And then for the, um, for the margarita, I, I'm thinking down on the rocks, but if you like yours up in a pretty cocktail glass, that is a good way to go as well. You'll need something to shake your drinks with. We use these uh, tin on tin or Boston shaker sets with a little glass. Um, if you don't have that, a little deli cup or something else that seals like a mason jar, that'll go really well and uh, will help you be able to uh, shake those drinks, uh, get all the air, dilution, ingredients mixed, all the things that you need. Uh, Cutting board and a knife come in handy here. We're gonna make uh, some simple lime garnishes to go with our drinks. And then for measuring tool, I'm gonna use these jiggers we have in the bar room, two ounces over one, three quarters over a half. Um, but uh, just remember tablespoons, half an ounce, highly accurate unit of measure, a tablespoon. We just don't use it in the bar because you have to uh, dole out four of them to get to two ounces. So it's just a little slower, but it's very accurate and a great way to make drinks at home. A couple of advanced questions. Uh, Mark texted in when he logged in and asked us, um, saying that he read somewhere that Robert Simonson really liked uh, my Jack Rose recipe. And could he have it? You know, Mark, early in January, we did a Calvados cocktail class. It was pretty awesome. Um, we made the Jack Rose. And, and, uh, and so I've got that recipe all queued up. And that's going to get direct message to you in the chat. Um, Marjorie wants to know if mezcal and tequila really affect one's brain differently. I loved her comment. Uh, I heard that from my girls in LA and uh, we might get into that a little bit more, but you know, the ethanol alcohol in all spirits does affect the body pretty much the same. If you ask people if they have a different reaction to vodka, gin, rum, or tequila, 100% of them will say that they do. Um, science hasn't proved that they don't. It just is only proved that ethanol gets metabolized the same way by everybody, but everybody seems to know that they have a little bit different reaction to the other things that are in their spirits. So um, we might get into that and swap some stories later. And lastly, coming to us, one of our ardent supporters out on the West Coast watches every week from Santa Barbara, celebrating a big birthday today. Lou Cannon is 88 years old. Wanna wish Lou a very happy birthday. He has some family out there and they're making cocktails on Cocktail Club. Happy birthday, dad, thanks for watching. All right, bartending since 2006, Melly Wurzma's resume reads like a bar crawl that's not to be missed. After falling in love with the bar drink, she applied and was hired for the first of two stints at that iconic craft watering spot in Fort Point, Boston. As the opening bar manager for Bronwyn and Somerville, she literally had the opportunity to build the bar, sanding, painting, whatever was needed. Moving to New York found Melly with shifts at the roof. Saxon and Parole, Jupiter Disco, and most notably, she landed the gig running the esteemed program at Extra Fancy in Brooklyn. She has supported Speed Rack in New York and Boston, attended Camp Runamuck in Kentucky, and took part in the Grand Ten Distilling Academy in 2014. One of her cocktails was featured in the wonderful collection of modern toasts to historic women, Drinking Like Ladies, by Misty Kalkofen and Kitty Amon. On her return to Boston from the Big Apple, she helped open Shore Leave worked at Chickadee, an innovation and design building in South Boston, and poured shots at one of Boston's most famous dives, the TAM. You can support her directly by hitting the tip jar. Her Venmo credentials are in the chat, and you can find her in person in Eastie at the Quiet View 
which she calls her favorite kind of bar and whose tagline says it all, top shelf, lowbrow. Welcome, Millie. <laughs> Hi, how are you guys? We're doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing really well today. You all awesome. notice I giggle a lot and I'm always nervous. <laughs> yeah, well, are you one of the uh, many of us who are kind of the introvert, extrovert bar types? Absolutely. I think that uh, I think that I, I well, yes, yes. <laughs> to put it lightly, I think I, I found myself that I get nervous and I talk a lot, and so being behind a bar made a lot of sense because it was really an easy place to just ramble at people constantly and ask them lots of questions about themselves. <laughs> well, I bet your coworkers you know, who don't really want to talk a lot. Love it. They're like, don't just send Ellie over there. They just, push her over. Want to talk, you know. <laughs> well, hey, tell us. I mean, man, you look. I would love to to depose you about every one of those great bars that you've worked at. But tell us about the quiet few, because I'm obsessed with this place, but people don't know it yet. And I want them to find it. Oh, I mean, I was obsessed with this place long before they, they actually asked me if I would want to join the team. Um, it is just this really cute little neighborhood bar. Um, it is a bar, like not a restaurant. So you, that is the first thing to remember. You're not going to come in and find a wait list or reservations. Um, it's definitely first come first served, but we make it I go out of our way to be this as hospitable as humanly possible, just the same way you would expect from any of the, the restaurants that I've worked in the past. Um, it's a more, hmm, Trying to think of a good way to describe everybody who works there. It's just a really welcoming crowd. I worked with Gwen over at Shoreleave and fell in love with her and her personality. All everybody there is behind the stick, has a similar background of like working in great restaurants and hospitality, but also like being in theater. We're all big nerds. I actually got involved with this because I was playing Dungeons and Dragons with everybody uh, during the during quarantine, and um, so. Again, as you do you're gonna find people <laughs> as, as one does you know um but it's the kind of place where everybody is welcome everybody my phone is sorry my watch keeps on buzzing me and it's very distracting so i'm going to take that off um hey, it's a did very you ever go to the bar hey, like i was melly did you ever go to the b-side lounge when it during its 10 years you, you started... i loved the b-side lounge i got thrown out of the b-side lounge for using the men's restroom one night <laughs> which That's was funny awesome but sorry it's not so the, you know, the second the second I stepped in the quiet few, I texted Pat Sullivan, the owner of the of the B side, and I was like, "Oh, they're they're doing it in Eastie. It's that just that great neighborhood vibe, super welcoming. I mean, yeah, it it it's as if the service it's like five stars with without the the stress of the tablecloth. The bells you know, and whistles. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just it's it's just I guess the word I always think of when I try to describe that place is um natural. Right. You know, it's that's the way a bar it is. should be. It absolutely is. It's the kind of place where you're going to get a, a burger and a hot dog. But at the same time, you can find foie gras on, you know, that hot dog oftentimes. And we have like a simple hard boiled egg, which is like an old bar snack. But you can get that with caviar. So it's it's really, really simple and really nice service. But you can also still feel like you're having a, like a gourmet hamburger. It's awesome. And the, the whiskey, like it's everything from like a, a $6 pickleback to a $35 pour. It's amazing. I I've always felt welcomed and loved that place. So it's just been a lot of fun. Now that we have the patio, it's a little bit weird, but it's also really cool that you can have your outdoor dining experience or you can come inside and watch the Bruins win. It's just a fun place. I love it. I love everything about that. Hey, should we, um, should we make a cocktail while we keep talking? Let's make it. some cocktails, yeah. All right, I'm gonna do this Paloma, um, and I'm gonna lead us on that. And I, you know, it's a funny thing. Like I, I definitely caught a little. It was it was fun writing about it this week, and the crazy, silly hoax of a story that <laughs> was perpetrated by story. Evan. It's so I, I good, knew, you know. I um, knew Evan before I started at Drink Femme because I think we must have met either when he was at Highland Kitchen, or maybe even just met at Highland. So I knew him before I worked at Drink and heard this story and saw the wiki page. And that, that which one were you credited with? Was it the old fashioned? Because John was credited with the Sazerac. Yeah, well, so um, <laughs> just, to, just to quickly bring our viewers Sorry. up to speed who haven't read the backstory here. Um, in 2009, a few Boston bartenders hacked a couple of Wikipedia pages and took credit for certain drinks. And it was all meant in good fun. And of course, um, it, it had re some ramifications. The, the one we're making today, the Paloma, um, came out of, uh, of Evan Harrison, want, ha, having come from Texas and really kind of knowing how to put one of these together, 
wanting to sort of advance that style over what was then a kind of craft cocktail rework, nothing wrong with that, using fresh grapefruit juice instead of the grapefruit soda like we're going to do. Um, and then it ended up on menus and blogs and postings and it lives on forever. And it's sort <laughs> of like a, it's like a cautionary tale of like, you should use other sources. We know this than Wikipedia. Um, my crew, when, and a lot of this was happening from the Cambridge side, but also over at Drink, the, the, I think Ezra had the Bijou next to her, her <laughs> name and stuff. Um, my crew was, did something with the old fashioned, but then went on to, in the bio to describe how I invented the Xerox copier in 1917, <laughs> which they did this, they did the hack on my computer. So I got locked out of Wikipedia, which I don't use as my only source, but at the time, we used it occasionally. So um, anyhow, let's bring it back around. Um, one of the things that, that I do that is a little bit different is I do like to add a little texturing. I like to add some agave nectar or a simple syrup, especially when I'm using one of these newer um, craft, lighter, less sugar mixers like the Q grapefruit soda we have. If you're using, you know, Ting or Squirt or one of those Frescas that has a, a, a little more sugar in it, you probably can leave it out. Um, but for, for this one, I really like, I like the floral quality of it and I like that little bit of extra texture. So I think we're working differently. You have made a cool one-to-one -one, um, syrup out of your agave nectar. I'm I did, yeah. doing straight agave nectar. So I'm going with even less than a half an ounce. And I was gonna say wow. when I opened this agave nectar and poured it to make the, the, the syrup that you probably didn't need to actually dilute it. Um, it's nice and thin. And the ones I've used in the past have, have, oftentimes can be really thick, but. Well, this is a wild card, isn't good. it? Like, yeah. like uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the sugar intensity is different and the consistency is different from some of them. Um, so it's important to, uh, you make, are you making one too? Oh, I you will. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, let's well, have I have a, drink a different together. kind of jiggers. So these are the jiggers that we use oh, cool. um, at drink. And I figured we could both do our own different little mix on each of them. So you said you were yeah, doing so a quarter build, of an ounce, She's right? building right in that oxo, which is cool. I did, a, I did a quarter ounce of straight nectar, which is about a half ounce of syrup, three quarters lime juice for this one, and then uh, a couple of ounces of mezcal. And uh, yeah, so I have to kind of pour one ingredient at a time out of these, but um, after you pour that out- This is a race, I would have won. Drink, <laughs> Um, well, no, it's also cool too, like that sort of like, you can look in yours, it's almost like a little mixing glass. You can look yeah, down and see if, if you've had to walk away, you can see if you've left something out. If you missed something. You yeah, go, it's, right? it's also really great for like, if you have, if you're using an expensive mixer, because you build with like the smallest ingredient first. So you want to use like your lime, your simple syrup, everything else goes in there. So those are cheaper to dump out than say a nice bottle of mezcal is. Yeah, I love that about you. That's uh, I'm kind of old school and will often still start my recipes from the top down. Um, oh, I still the use these. Set, nice the little... younger set has gotten so disciplined. It's, <laughs> it's part of um, your generation's dedication to less waste. Not even really. I think it was maybe a, the first barman who started to think like that was doing it from a perspective as a businessman. But it's become something where I think it's um, just like ethical uh, and a, a great example of how you work. Um, all right, so we're going to shake this and strain this onto a little fresh ice. Oh, smells delightful already. Oh, so good. So floral. And I do a big, vigorous shake long enough to really get everything together, get it cold and diluted. I don't go any Yeah, you don't want to do too hard. Yeah, because you're going to add a little soda in here too, and so got that going for us. Um, and now I'm going to quickly cut a little lime wheel. And that'll give me something nice to be able to tuck in there. So just using the saw type knife coming right down the edge. And then I'm going to top with grapefruit soda. I like to keep my mixers really cold. I had that out, but I had this one over here on ice. Oh, I love your glass. And you're a little mason jar. <laughs> A little hipster over here. <laughs> that is great. And then just as much for a little color and a little extra, extra coming off of that lime wheel. 
And here we have a Paloma as not created by Evan Harrison. Cheers. <laughs> Despite what he may believe, you know, cheers. Oh, he knows. Of course, I consulted with him just to make sure, like, uh, <laughs> just to give him another opportunity to lie to me. He was very forthcoming. <laughs> I love this drink. This is one of my favorite things to have in the summer. This is something I'll drink year round. It is so light, so refreshing, dangerous because you can drink so many of them without realizing you've done so. Um, I didn't, but I didn't it's put just... a pinch of salt. I didn't put a pinch of salt in mine, and I you like that. So I'm your... actually, I forgot to. I'm just going to put a little on my top ice cube and then kind of around i'm going to stir it right in as i go and that's also a good point that's something you can always do at the last minute if you find that you don't if you want it to be saltier you can always add more because the salt will melt into slowly onto the ice cube and into the drink especially in this one too where i like um the floral quality of the agave nectar it's like it's various flavors and i like how it texturizes the drink a little bit but i don't really want it to sweeten the drink and that bit of salt can kind of balance that effect out i think or at least in balance out my perception of it, you know? Absolutely. Um, Not mind if I do. Oh, they're asking, drink. it's all about the jigger, Millie. They're asking <laughs> in the chat about the OXO. Why don't you give yeah. them about the, I mean, uh, go ahead and give them a little visual tutorial. Show me inside of that cup and tell the them inside, how you use that. I don't know if you can see the numbers very you well. Can, yeah, we can see the layered numbers just like it's a, like a big measuring cup, you know? So it starts at the bottom. Ooh, there's a little left in there. It starts at the bottom with a quarter of an ounce, goes up to a half. Then we're going to have three quarter. Well, you don't have three quarters, but three quarters obviously will be between the half and the one ounce mark. And then you get to one and a half and two. So it's a really great it's a measuring tool that you can get these at like Target. You can get them at, I'm pretty sure Boston Shaker still has them. Um, you can have the clear ones as well, which is really nice. So for us, for you at home, you're not gonna get washed as often as a bartender will. So the steel ones are really nice because these can just get beat up. Um, but again, it measures up to the very tip top right here is a full three ounces. So that would, would traditionally be one cocktail, but I know people who will use it and dump it as they're going. Um, I like to build my entire drink here because it really saves you from waste on your on your countertop and you can see what you're doing as you go. And it's great. And each side, on the other side of it, it has the milliliter in case you prefer to do that rather than ounces. Um, but they're great. You really also like have, an, you have a, a, an interesting advantage and this is just for, I mean, this is not something we use at home, but it's something to consider in the bar and it's a choice that you make in a program is, you know, say we're mounting in rounds is what we call building a bunch of different kinds of drinks. And we have a yeah. sequence that we can work through where we are sort of self-cleaning the jiggers. Like you, you can go from lemon to lime, you can go from clear spirits to brown spirits, and you can so you kind of use this tool without giving it a full rinse and build several different drinks. Well, if you build in rounds right into OXOs, you're yeah, picking you just, up the you lemon juice once and putting lemon juice in the three of the five drinks. In three to four different drinks. Has it. You're putting, yeah, I, you know, chartreuse in the one that it goes in and you can build around without anything ever kind of cross touching so that's yeah cool. you, it, it saves for your bar getting super messy and also again like i remember when i did speed rack john texted me and just saying think about the fact that you're like on service bar on a friday night and i was like i just have to set out all of my cocktails in these triggers and i can build them really quick and then just boom 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 you're done so you can make like jackson was just saying um like eight cocktails at once and it's really good if you want to make a picture of margaritas for friends because you got all these and they're just dumping as you go. <laughs> hey, here's and it's a really question. Good. Yes. This is a question I think you would, I would, I would love to hear you go on about a little bit. So these are some guests who love Mezcal. And when they go out, they get served drinks and they don't really have to ask that many questions. But they don't really know how to really kind of think about what brands to buy or, you know, I guess they're, they're asking, you know, can I just put that in a tequila recipe? Um, so maybe like sort of thinking a little bit about that difference of tequila and mezcal would be useful for them. Yeah, I mean, well, at the end of the day, I think everybody, I mean, I know when I first started to drink, I made this mistake of um, thinking that mezcal was a type of tequila. But in reality, the great grandparent of tequila is mezcal. It's been around for over 400 years. And um, it is the smokier version because they actually take it and they, I hope I'm going the right way. Please cut me off if I'm not, if I'm drifting away. No, you, um, go on, <laughs> please go on. The, this, the, when you think about mezcal, you have to think of like a terroir similar to like wine. And it's all single village, it's all small farmers. And these are people who are taking the, the, the heart of the agave plant and actually slow roasting it in all these really cool traditional ways. So you're gonna have 
families that have been doing this for generations and they're building pomperons on top of this mezcal and digging these huge pits and then slow roasting it for a few days on end and then distilling it. It's, it's a really, really cool distillate that I don't think a lot of people know about. But I mean, again, I think more and more I'm seeing mezcal I'm seeing mezcal and soda being called for more than tequila soda because you're starting to realize the smokiness is really interesting. And as you get more advanced into mezcal, you're going to find things like my favorite is chichicaba, which I know is like the second up above Vita. Mm-hmm. But I love that it tastes like you're you're drinking barbecued pineapple. That's what it always right. reminded me of. And well, I think we just... may have we may have we may have all made a little tiny bit of a misstep by using smoky as the word. I, just true. bear with yeah. me for a second because this just kind of came to me like that has been a little off-putting to people and in some of them like my favorite santo domingo abaratus it's a fruit bomb you know it's very fruity yeah that's true and and i i think the word i'm gonna start using a little bit more is is roastiness yeah no absolutely you were talking about the roasting of the peonies i was thinking if that's what it is it's like it's it's not about the char it's about the the complex fruitiness just under the char and how it, you know? it's caramelizing it as it's being roasted so you're getting all the things that you get from aging you know whiskeys and tequilas that you're getting while it's actually being roasted in the pit that's true i'm saying this wrong missy's missy's watching this and yelling at me <laughs> you but know hey we of- gotta start some let's start we'll start with our with our unquestioned <laughs> love for mezcal and I then we'll so work much. up we'll work one of up, my favorites you know, We'll aspire. We'll aspire both on on that axiom and on the education one to 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 try to keep following Misty, but we know we are gonna fall <laughs> short. You know, it's true. It's um, true. <laughs> hey, we should make that other cocktail. The margarita. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, for people, after having having kind of had you show them how that OXO works, they can they can watch uh, and see how you build a drink in that. One of the things I'm going to do first, because I always forget to do it when I'm making drinks, is I'm going to go ahead and take my my big, huge rocks glass, and I'm going to, going to do a salt rub it. So take your wine before, give it a nice little rub. Then got a nice little plate of salt. I just use kosher salt. You could use sea salt. I think that if you tried to use like an iodized salt, it would probably be too thick. But I always like to do a half rim. So that way you can go from enjoying a salty drink to having just the, the, the cocktail itself. I also still feel a little pinch of salt in the cocktail is really nice. Um, we're gonna make this one spicy. So I love to use Tabasco. A um, couple dashes of Tabasco goes a long way. If you want it to be spicier, you can use more. If you have the time, you can slice the jalapenos or habaneros or whatever pepper of your choice. But that is something that you need to like rest on, which is what we do at the Quiet Few. We uh, we actually take. This isn't coming out as quickly as I would like. <laughs> mine mine was a flood. This is do. fun. Yours was a flood. <laughs> mine's gonna, mine's not going to be super spicy. Smell of tobacco. So I usually so warm up agave nectar with red chili flake in it. Strain oh, that like off that. and keep that as like hot agave. But again, that takes an hour. You know, like and if it you want to. You yeah. want to go on the drink, um, but it's also like a little bit different than the quality of this. Why is Tabasco a better hot sauce to use than some of the others? For I like Tabasco because it's vinegar based and it actually just like blends in with the theme of science. It actually doesn't separate. So you have the vinegar mixing in with it with the um with the, the actual spirit. So it doesn't have that separation that you've seen so many times where you've gone and with people are using like Cholula or whatever else. The vinegar and and the the alcohol actually blend really nicely together. No, that was not scientific at all, guys. I apologize. I used to know the I, science of this more. Of, no, it kind of explains like why a shrub works in a cocktail better than an oil does. Exactly. You know? That's true. Because well, oil separates from, from water and everything. And the water is in the spirit. Hey, thanks, Jackson. You got me back, back on track. So it's a half <laughs> you, know, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I get distracted so easily. It's a half ounce of agave. And then we're going to do a full ounce of lime juice. Um, the lime juice is really important in this cocktail because you really want to have a bright citrusy cocktail. So this doesn't hold, doesn't go over three ounces very easily. So dump that first, then add your two ounces of mezcal. Again, I like to give a little shake when it comes to any drink that's going to be on ice, just because I don't want it to be over diluted because you don't want to be drinking a watery margarita by your last few sips. You do still want to dilute it enough that it's not like 
the most potent margarita you've ever had in your life. Which I'm thinking all of us probably were making ourselves during the lockdown. <laughs> well, it's really, you know, it's important to find like you, where you rely, where you like that sweet and sour balance to be. And then, because after you, after you, that preference changes a little less than like, I need a little extra booze in my drink yeah. tonight. And, you know, so you, you can kind of push the base, but generally uh, keeping the sweet and sour the same. I'm with you. I'm putting a little pinch of salt right in mine. I enjoy that. Ted definitely introduced me to that idea. And you can make a saline, saline solution, but for at home, really, it's just nice to have a little pinch in there and you can always add more or less. And the same thing goes for the Tabasco. If you find that you make it and it's not spicy enough, dab it into the drink and give it a little stir. You'll have to wait have for me. Yeah, proper ice cubes. You know, it's funny. I get them off this little, this little tray from Target. You know. Oh, nice. I really. We have a we have an ice maker, so I just. It just drives me crazy. There's 15 of them. What in this world comes 15 to a package? 15. Except 15 <laughs> ice like cubes. Hot dogs and hot dog buns. <laughs> Cigarettes and matches. My day. <laughs> Do people still smoke? <laughs> um, hey, I hate to do this, but bullet bullet questions flying in on us. Okay. I, just, I, I, I know you got a really nice piece dropping about it, but um, Cointreau, Triple Sec, Agave Nectar, why, why and when do you choose different ones? In your oh margarita? God, you're asking me this question. In a margarita, I think that you're gonna go with, yeah, I mean, I think that Cointreau, um, you would definitely use because it's a little bit heavier. It gives it a little more richness. Um, triple sec is light, like gently sweeter. I actually, this is so funny. I had somebody at the bar the other day who asked me that exact same question because he saw me make two different margaritas with, uh, and, and using both for different reasons. I think when you want to have a spicier drink, you do want to use something like um, like a Cointreau or like a Pierre Ferran Curacao because it does have a richness to it that plays really nicely with the um, spice. The same with the agave. Um, Whereas if it's, if you're using triple psych, it's definitely lighter and brighter. So that would, I think be benefit from not having a spicy drink. Sorry, mine's not spicy at all. I'm gonna try to add more. This is not, there we go. Mine's like, <laughs> mine's not, I mean, it's not not hot, but it's more savory, you know? It's yeah. Like, Cause it's also like the lime is so cooling at the same time. Oh, that's so good with mezcal. Um, I love that. Somebody, is, somebody in the chat is uh, saying that their mezcal is so smoky, they um, they can't drink more than a quarter ounce. I don't know if oh, it's no. a problem with the mezcal, but they go ahead in the chat, friend, and ask us what, uh, tell us what brand you're using, and we can go offline and talk a little bit about that. Um, it also the brand definitely makes a difference. Very sensitive. And then a lot of other people are asking us to talk about the mezcals we like. So just quickly, when you see this green bottle, you see the Del Maguey kind of portfolio of, and there are lots of different uh, mezcals and we don't have kind of the time to go into all of them. We have some favorites. This is Vita made from 100% Espadine, great for making drinks. Melly mentioned under the same Del Maguey label Chichicapa. Um, and I mentioned Santo Domingo Alvarado. So those are all single village expressions, expressions of, um, of Mezcal in this cooperative called Del Maguey. And you can always kind of trust this family of brands to be bringing you quality and then wildly different approaches, which is so cool. Yeah, um, it's, it's really interesting. They're all so very different. Like no two are the same. And like, I love Encano and I definitely blew through a bottle or two of that before I knew how hard it was <laughs> to grow. <laughs> right, but, right. Yeah, no, they, yeah, they are Encano. Some of those plants take decades plus yeah. to mature. And Tobola is such a precious resource as well because they're so small, take so long to yeah, grow. Yeah, so long. It's um, such a beautiful But product. yeah, as far as, as, as far as brands go, um, there, there are other reputable groups. But I just think this is such a great place to start. Um, and if you have uh, another brand and we're finding it a little off-putting, um, yeah, just try talk with your liquor store uh, person, especially if you go to Gordon's. They know what they're doing over there. They've got a lot of different lines they can kind of talk you through. Um, and then I would and also, also you can talk to your you know, bartenders. 
your bartender will definitely saying. let you taste things. Yeah. And you get to, you get to sit at a bar now. So, um, yeah, <laughs> just such like, a crazy new experience. Know. Can I try that one? I don't know. I'll try that one. I mean, honestly, if you get a rapport with your bartender, we're, I think most bartenders are going to start bringing down their favorite expressions and offering to have to taste you on it. I've definitely gone when I, when I first started really drinking it, my friend John was working at um, Olay in Cambridge, Somerville, and he put out a, a wide thing of it. It was like, taste this and taste this and taste this. I know at drink, they'll very really happily to do that as well. And same with chickadee. Anytime you get a bartender who is, anytime you get a bartender who has any experience with mezcal, they're going to want you to taste mezcals because they're so interesting. And again, like Jackson was saying earlier, there's such a wide variety that we don't, that, that aren't actually smoky. So it's, it's worth it to just ask questions. <laughs> well, and, uh, uh, you know, this, this brand's mantra is our words to live by across the board. Sip it, don't shoot it, they say. And it's a very ritualistic sipped beverage. So even though it's higher in alcohol and, and does make great cocktails, um, one of the best ways to enjoy it is just by having it neat. And if you purchase the uh, Boston.com's Mezcal cocktail kit for the week, you got one of these traditional little clay cups that we drink it out of. And if you don't think that things taste different out of clay or glass, just think about it. Like think about all the different things that you have, like how coffee is different out of porcelain, uh, how different drinks, how different wines taste different, in different glasses. This is so good to be enjoyed this way. Um, and this Copita is something you can keep. You don't have to give it astringent washing. Um, but when they're new, what we like to do is season them. So I'm going to pour just a tiny bit into my copita and I'm just kind of letting it gather any dust that was in there from the shipping and whatnot. And then I'm just going to kind of bless the ground with that a little bit. Worship mine as you do. Mine is a gift. <laughs> right. mine, is, mine is very seasoned. Yeah, so don't. <laughs> and then um, I'm just going to pour a sip and there's traditional kind of call and response the ways who is going to be you this time that's okay uh oh, Mally, don't make says, <laughs> says they say stigi bayou and everybody stigi bayou. repeats stigi bayou and then as we sip it or you know we sometimes yell bakim and there's the translations of it are i think on this theme of hypocritical origin stories <laughs> i've heard them described by people in the know as wildly different translations. The first one that I remember was when Phil Ward told me, Stigi means gather the life force and Bakim means roughly this. <laughs> Hard A. All right. Yeah. <laughs> will, you, will you lead us, Melly? Absolutely. Stigi Bayou. Stigi Bayou. Bakim. Bakim. I love doing this. Makes and me so I really, happy. You know, I just love to take a small amount of that, really swish it around the mouth. Yeah, it's got some alcohol burn. It's 100 proof, but it's, it's, it's got so much texture and so much fruit and so much floral. It's amazing. Mm. And that's a fun thing about visiting there is, is you keep your Copita with you if you're traveling from, you know, maker to maker. And you may have like 14 sips of this a day, but they're stretched out over the day and you never really get that kind of like, uh, um, what's the, uh, happy hour kind of buzz. You're just kind of at one with the 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 land the whole day as you as you sip it, you know. So, hmm. which is amazing. I'm planning a trip out there. I was in Mexico City gosh, before we could have actually travel for a week, and now my my next trip, I just definitely want to go to Oaxaca for a week and spend some time just enjoying all of the mezcal and all of the all of the sites. Uh, well, Oaxaca waits for you. Melly, thank you so much for spending some time thank with us. Thank you so much for having me. All the time we have for Cocktail Club this week. Join us again Thursdays at 7 p.m. Next week, we're making drinks with Pisco, the enchanting Peruvian brandy. We'll be making a Pisco sour. Get out the eggs and a Manhattan variation called El Capitan. Make sure to follow the link from our sign-up page to Gordon's Wine and Spirits. To pick up the Boston.com Pisco cocktail kit. You'll be supporting off their plate and getting everything you need for next week's Boston.com Cocktail Club. Thanks again, Melly. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.